we're here to cover the Knox Box program. Not only is it a township uh, fire code, but it's also a township ordinance that all businesses in Montgomery Township are required to have. Basically, it's a box, as you can see here, that's mounted on the wall, typically at the front of the building, that houses keys to access your building. And as you can see, the keys that are locked up in this Knox box never leave the premises. They're always secure in this box. And only the fire department has access to this box with this key. To inquire how to get a Knox box is you inquire at the Montgomery Township Fire Marshal's Office or the Montgomery Township Codes Department. Uh, the Fire Marshal's Office can be reached at 215-393-6936. There's a specific application that's required to fill out that has township signatures to process the application. These are three varieties of truss placards you should have. Floor and roof, roof and floor. These are good for the fire department to know when they get there in case the, the trusses are involved in fire. They, need, they know how long they have, the amount of time, heat that's involved in the trusses. And these should be uh, installed right in the area of the Knox box. So the fire department can easily see them when they get the key for the Knox box. Here we have the fire uh, alarm panel for the rec center. Uh, when we do our inspections, we're looking for a couple things from the fire panel. One, we're looking to make sure that the system is in normal. So it has the time, the day, and it's showing that the entire system here in the store is normal. Along with this inspection, we look for this, and we also look for your records. And you've had the um, alarm system inspected yearly, and also that you've had the sprinkler system inspected yearly. Uh, we do require those uh, reports to be handed over to the fire marshal during the inspection. And we'll review those reports, and what we're looking for is any deficiencies on the system itself. If there are deficiencies on the paperwork, we ask that uh, the deficiencies be taken care of, cleaned up, fixed, and then you have to submit another um, fire alarm report that says that the system is in proper working and no deficiencies. What we look for during fire inspections with fire extinguishers. So the first thing we're going to be looking for is an up-to-date tag here. We want to make sure that it's a certified company inspects them annually every year. So this is 2022 of August. That's good. We're going to be checking out every extinguisher. The other thing we're going to be looking for is making sure that they're mounted to the wall and not sitting on the ground. They can be mounted up to five feet from the handle and no lower than four inches from the bottom of the extinguisher. Uh, distance between extinguishers, we're going to make sure there's no more than 75 feet between each extinguisher. If there's lobbies and things like that, we may require an extra extinguisher. Uh, we want to make sure there's no uh, merchandise or carts or anything blocking the extinguishers that would prevent them from being used. And then if you or your staff are in need of any trainings, our department has staff trainings that we offer. We come out to your site and we're able to train them with live fire and actual extinguishers. So reach out if you need any training. Talk about means of egress and exit lighting, and you want to make sure your exit signs are illuminated and the power goes out, you need to stay illuminated for 90 minutes. But you want to make sure your means of egress is always clear and there's no obstructions in the way, both on the way to the door and on the other side. And the doors should be open easily with not excess amount of force, and most fire should be good to solid holding the bracket. Extension cords are prohibited in all commercial settings unless they're being used for temporary use, such as a fan or a tool. Uh, they can't be used for permanent wiring. So if we come across this in inspection, we'd ask you to remove it um, and not to use it. Um, what you can use is a UL listed power strip uh, with some restrictions. First of all, when you get the power strip, you want to make sure that it's UL listed. 
and it has a sticker on the back of it. The second thing that you want to look out for is what we call daisy chaining. So you don't want to plug power strips into power strips into power strips. Each power strip should have their own receptacle. This is an example of what you wouldn't want to do. So one power strip is plugged into a receptacle and then another power strip is plugged into that power strip. And that's an example of something that you wouldn't want to do and is a fire hazard. So next we're gonna talk about storage height in a commercial building. In a non-sprinkler building, the clearance from the ceiling to storage height has to be 24 inches. In a sprinkler building, it has to be 18 inches. So this box right here would be too close in a non-sprinkler and sprinkler building. So if we came across this in an inspection, we'd ask you to move it down to a lower shelf, or um, we'd obviously have to come back if there was excessive storage. In our next room of a commercial facility, uh, we look for a couple things. One, we look for no storage around the electrical boxes. The code has that the boxes should be 36 inches clear of any combustibles and a, a, a walkway that will be clear to access the electrical boxes themselves. Uh, when we enter our electrical room, we look for all of the boxes themselves, if they have a front door on them, uh, that they're properly marked. And once we enter a breaker box, we look to see if any of the breakers have any open spaces. And as you can tell here, some of the spaces that don't have breakers are covered by plastic covers. And this is to prevent anybody from coming in, sticking their finger in there, and getting an electrical shock. Um, as we move, we go around the room. Many commercial buildings have multiple electrical boxes. Uh, we check our generator services, make sure they're sealed up, and again we'll go to the dairy electrical box and just to check to see that they're labeled, the doors are on them, and that any breaker, open breaker boxes are covered. By code, there should be some sort of marking on the outside of your electrical and mechanical room. Clearly marking what's behind the door so we know when we do our inspection and if there's an emergency that all the mechanical and electrical components are within this room. The next portion we're going to cover is what you are required to do for the fire pit for sprinklers. It's required annually that you have a full FPA inspection of that system. One of the first things that we'll look for is clearance around the riser. You have to maintain clearance and accessibility to the riser itself, as well as we're going to go take a look at the tags to make sure it's within one year of inspection. It's, at, it's required annually. This one here it was last inspected in May of 22, so therefore it will be required again in May of next year. Now along with the tag also comes required records that you need. Those records should be deficient free so there's no deficiencies in the system. If there are, you're required and obligated to make sure that those deficiencies are repaired. If you need to schedule a fire inspection at your business, you can contact the fire marshal's office.